Hello everybody, it's Phil, the professional decorator, back with you with another very interesting YouTube video about HVLP and how to set up a QT5 HVLP sprayer. Now, if you're watching this, it's probably because you've never done spraying before or you're quite interested into learning about HVLP spraying. Now, what I'd like to tell you today is just some basic setup of a machine like this, which is a stage five HVLP. I'll try and make it as simple as possible for you to go away and think this is what you want to do in your career as a painter and decorator. Now, I've got the stage five HVLP. You've seen from previous videos, I've also got airless spray. I've also got a conventional sprayer, which I'll show in another video when I get round to um, doing some spraying with that. But for now, I thought it might be very interesting just to discuss how to set up the HVLP, where I'd be using it, how I use it, and how it can work for you. Because this is like what I'm going to be telling everybody. This is where you can start making the money. We're all, we're all in it to make a little bit of money. And if this can help us, the general ordinary painter and decorator, earn a little bit more money, make life easier, this is what you may be wanting to buy for yourself. Put it on your Christmas list, put your little tips away that you get from customers to treat yourself, because this is probably what you're going to want to buy after you've seen this video, hopefully. Press the bell, comments below, subscribe. You know all, you know it all by now. Right, so we'll start off. Right, HVLP sprayer. Basic principles. You've got the spray gun. You've got the handle. Right, what we've got on here, the spray gun. That regulates, this knob on the side regulates the fan pattern. So unlike your airless sprayer where it's all to do with the tip that gives you the fan pattern on the HVLP and this is also a similar gun that you'll get on a conventional sprayer um, the dialer on the side alters the fan width from narrow to almost a pinpoint um, line to a wide spray pattern at the back there's another dial because this is the stage 5 the dial at the back, you've got numbers on it. Can't see, you'll see it there, got numbers on it. This regulates how much paint goes through the spray tip. So we've got two things already. We're baffling you with science, aren't we, already? Right, so we've got a spray gun, HVLP spray gun. We've got a knob on the side that's altering the fan. We've got a knob on the back that's altering how much paint we go through. We're simple, straightforward already no no we're not because there's a little bit more to it right the paint goes through the gun obviously the air comes up here we'll come on to that in a minute the paint goes through the gun well the paint's actually coming up through here but the paint goes through the gun and it comes out there now depending on the needle size and this is where it gets complicated depending on the needle size of your actual setup will depend on how much paint Will be being produced and put through the end of that tip so where we've spoke about orifice sizes before on the spray tips from um, the airless this is a similar sort of thing the orifice size this is a 1.8 mil we can get smaller i've got a 1.8 that does a little bit thicker paints because it allows more paint to come through but then i've also got here a 1.5 now that's the thinner paints now the thinner paints I'll use is um, your colour bond um, paint that does the, H, um, the UPVC spraying. The 1.8 is more of your finished paints for your woodwork and also I use it for um, all coat exterior when I'm spraying all coat exterior. So if I get that out I'll probably explain it a bit more. That's your needle. And the needle is in is in the back 
of the gun. So if you see there, that's a 1.8, that's a 1.5, thicker, thinner. So for now, I'll just put the 1.8 back in. It slides into the back. Don't forget to put your spring in and screw it up. Now the tighter that is, the tighter that is, that doesn't allow you to move the trigger very much because obviously it wouldn't let much paint out. Open it up. See? It's allowing more. Even more can go all the way back. So that would let quite a bit of paint through the gun. And the paint's coming up through here. Right. Are you following me so far? If not, questions below. So that's the basic setup of the gun. Now the idea with HVLP is you've got a finer finish. Yes, you can do fine finish on airless, but with this sort of gun, you can do your furniture spraying, you can do your woodwork spraying, and you get more control over it. Why do you get more control? Because you can control the fan, you can control the paint flow. Now the paint comes up through the bottom. Now, if I show you this, This is a remote pot. That's a suction pot. Now today I'm going to connect up a suction pot and show you where the paint is in relationship to the gun. You put your paint in there, simple. You shut the lid, like so. And then your paint pot connects to the lower part of the gun. all seen one of these before so your paint is in there it goes up through there out the front now the paint comes out the front like little ball droplets now the regulation of the air the atomization from the air I don't know you can see the holes in the air cap that mixes with the paint that's coming out through the tip the little droplets mix with the air into a swirl pattern because these I think we used to call them um, ram horns at college. The air comes out there, mixes with the paint, spirals it across, hits your surface. Now your droplets of paint, if your paint's too thick, will droplet onto your surface and give you a little bit of a texture. You don't want that. That's where you've just got to mix your paint right, get your paint consistency, your viscosity of your paint, that's the word we want to use. Just get your thickness of your paint right so it comes up, and out, mixes with the air, spats onto the surface and gives you a lovely finish when it's dried. We're good so far. You're following me, aren't you? Yeah. Now, this is an air pipe. Of course, that pot needs to be pressurised. How are you going to pressurise that pot? That pot gets pressurised from the air coming from the machine. And we'll come on to that in a minute. So, the air's coming up here. It's coming through the gun. It's mixing with the air cap. Mixing in the air cap, coming out the air cap, and the paint's coming out, and the paint mixes with the air outside of the air cap. If I've not explained that right, just tell me down below, but I think I'm, I think I'm covering it. Right, you need to pressurize this air pot. Now, I'm gonna take this cap off. Air comes out that cap because the air is coming up here, it would go out there, go through there. That little bleeder, and I don't mean it in a rude sense, like a bleeding little hole there, the air's coming out, you connect this to it. Just do it gently. See, air's come up here, through there, there's a non-return valve. Make sure you get that right. You know you've got that right because if you took that off, if you blow through it, yes, I can blow into the pot. If it was the wrong way around, it would be a non return valve. You wouldn't be able to blow anything through. You want air to go through that pipe into the pot to pressurise that pot, to force the paint out by pressurising it through that centre stem there to come out your gun. So you connect that onto there. 
clip it onto there. So we've nearly got the gun set up actually, haven't we? We've nearly got it set up. What we're needing now is the next part. Right, on these HVLPs, particularly the QT5, you get a bit of a whip hose. Are you gonna say, where does the whip hose go, Phil? Where does the whip hose go? I know you're all asking. Right, the whip hose. You set the whip hose up and there's a valve. There's a air regulating valve. You can turn it, you can shut the air off. If you can see there, it's shut off. If I turn it, it's opening it. So while it's open, full flow of air from that machine comes through the pipe. If you want to shut it off, you can do. That's where you're going to regulate your air. Sometimes you don't want so much air coming through it. So off, on. Right. Principle of that is, it's a quick release valve. That goes onto there. It's fastened on. We're starting to look like a proper spray setup now, aren't we? Well, my hose has come off. I'd only put it on loosely. So we spray, spray set up. That's the whip hose, it's lightweight. This needs to screw somewhere. It doesn't screw straight onto the machine. I'm going to stop a minute because I've got to look for parts. I'm back. Just got to unscrew something. That connects to the main air pipe from the machine and you screw it on. The other end, which has got the brass fitting, that connects to that. As I say, for now, I'm just doing it loosely because I'm going to show you it all set up. So, you follow me so far. The main big hose pipe connects the fitting on the machine. The hose pipe comes through to connect to the whip hose, which is just screwed on. The whip hose, quick release, fits onto the spray gun bottom there and keep your air regulator which you can shut off the air open and close nearest the gun because that's where you need the control my hose pipes come off so for now i think we're nearly all an expert at setting up the hvlp aren't we now on the hvlp on this one you get filters clean these out every job just wash them in some soapy water, let them dry. You do get spare ones, and they just go into the back, into there. Are we good? Yeah. So we're there for now. Right, back to the gun. This is a suction feed, because it is sucking up, I'll show you. The paint is being sucked up through the pot that's pressurized, up there, straight to the end out and we've got it air's coming up here paint's going up there fasten that back on there is there is the gun that has the gravity feed totally different gun instead of the connection being there the connections there and there's a little upturned pot that gravity feeds the paint in through the top and out there instead of coming up suction gravity let's put a spanner in the works sometimes that isn't enough paint for what you're wanting to do you might be on a job where you're spraying all your architraves all your doors all your skirting that holds about a litre you want a bit more than that so invest in a remote pot and that's what I'm going to come on to now and that's why I've only just loose fitted all these together remote pot 
gravity pot. See the difference? You get nearly two and a half litres in there. This is what you want on bigger jobs. So let's show you how this works. Similar sort of principle. Paint in there, put the top on and start connecting it up. This is a handle. Let's just see if we can do this quickly and easily for you. I'm just going to screw the handle onto the top. Again, I'll do it loosely. That connects onto there. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to connect. The part I took off the main hose, I'll show you this, the main hose being there, undo that, you're taking the whip hose off for now, you're putting the quick release valve that comes with the kit onto the end of the main fat hose, thick hose, it's very thick, it softens up when you're using the machine because the machine gets hot, so that is quick release, fits onto there. I won't connect it yet because I'll show you the other bits. Your whip hose screws onto that now. Got that on there. So look at us. What have we got now, look? You're going to say, well, where, where does the pot go? Well, we're not going to put the pot on there. What we're going to do is, because I did it loose, I'm going to undo that. Make sense now. To this bad boy. Connect that to it. Where do you think that end goes? Yeah, you've got it. This, this connects to then the pop. Now, that there where I've taken off let me see it. the air pipe, that there, let's move this down. Got to go for pots. Let's see, I've got it. In the kit, get a little grommet that connects onto there so no air goes into there so you've capped off that so your paints coming up here from the remote pot so how does this work same principle the main The main air from the machine connected to there, so that's on there. Air's in there, air comes through the whip hose, and that's going to come back out your gun. Same principle again. But how are we pressurizing that pot? Pressurization of the pot, again with the non return valve on, same principle. Air comes through there into the pot. So the machine is pressurizing the pot. The pressurization of the pot forces the paint up through that pipe. Up through that pipe, through the paint hose. The paint hose goes all the way through, all the way through to your gun. So it comes up there, out there, and again we're back to the principles of the little droplets of paint are coming out the end, mixing with the air, atomizing, mixing, mixing, hitting your surface, and you'll know how far to regulate your surface when you'll do a bit of a practice. Too close, too thick, too far, be everywhere. You'll learn that, that's something you'll pick up with practice. So we're back to mixing the paint. 
regulating the paint flow. So your paint flow is being regulated by how much paint you want coming through, through the needle. Turn it down, nothing comes through. Can't get anything through that. Open it all the way up, lets loads of paint through. So again, depending on your thickness of your paint, that's what you want to be working on. Practice, see how it reacts. Little paint, more paint. You'll just get it right once you do a little bit of a test um, test piece on a piece of lining paper. So, are we all right with that so far? I think we've understood it. Yeah, hopefully we've got it. Do you need a remote pot straight away? Probably not, but you'll probably find that you want to be doing areas that need more paint and you don't want to be filling up your little pot too soon. But for little jobs, and what I've got on the next video is spraying some UPVC. I've got a window to spray new PVC. That will just be enough paint for me to use to spray one window. I won't use a full litre, but just working with a small amount, that will be ideal. So for now, I'm going to stop talking about the gun and setting it up in the machine. I'm going to disconnect it because I just want to show you how I change a needle. So disconnect that, that's off, unhook that and don't forget this, regulate your air, sometimes you don't want all the air coming through at full power, just turn it down slightly, that's where you'll turn your air pressures down to virtually off. If you don't have enough air coming through your paint won't atomise nicely, so just practice, turn it one way and then the other, do it on a sample card piece. Don't go straight onto a job and then start playing with it. Do it before you start um, your finished work. Right, quick release. We're taking it all off. We're back to the gun. Right. That's what you get as a needle kit. You get the needle. You get that. That's your orifice. This is a 1.5, so it's smaller than the 1.8, obviously. You need to swap that. And you get a new air cap as well. So that goes in there, and your cap's there. Right, you need to swap all that out onto your gun. Unscrew the air cap. In your kit, the tools with this. Just undo the end. That's off, put that on the floor, undo the paint, flow valve, see that, you've got your spring, you're putting that in there, that in there, tightening it up. the orifice going back on, tighten that up, back on there, tightened up, air cap, there, that, back on. So now we've got a 1.5, this will do thinner paint. Now you've seen on previous videos if you've watched me doing airless, I like to get some Vaseline, which I've got in my box. Put some Vaseline around your threads. Vaseline around there. Vaseline around the thread when you put that in. And in your kit, for your cleaning kit, for your um, HVLP, you'll get some needle oil just to put on the needle to help it be a bit more lubricated across there. You put a couple of spots of that, or just wipe your fingers with some. Um, Vaseline on that, just help it glide in there. It doesn't mix with the paint because it's not coming into contact with it and you're not putting that much on. And again, put some Vaseline on there, just in case any paint gets stuck on it, you don't want it seizing up. So, for now, do you think you're all alright with that? Have I missed anything? 
Am I saying something that's totally stupid that I've, I've missed the plot with it? Do you need to put some comments below on, am I doing it right, am I doing it wrong? Could I improve on what I'm doing? Have I made it simple enough for you? Please comment below, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, press the bell. Have I got a bell? I still don't know whether I've got a bell or not. But now we're, I'm just looking, we've got 26 minutes of me waffling on. Hopefully 26 minutes of your time watching me is going to save you a lot more time on future jobs. And this is what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you what you could be doing to make life easier for you. Work smarter, not harder. And I'm going to sign out with a lovely close-up of the gun with a 1.5 on. And hopefully, I'm say hopefully, you're going to take some little golden nuggets of information from me that you went, yeah, that's a good idea, Phil. Thank you very much. I'll give you a like on your video. Tongue in cheek, I'm joking. If you like it, brilliant. If you don't, not worried, not bothered. But my next video will be actually showing you using this with a 1.5 spray new PVC. I'll um, make it as simple as possible because that's something you might be wanting to get into. So for now, I think I've covered everything from the paint hoses, the air hoses, changing your tips out, explaining how the gun works. If there's anything that you need to know, ask or as we all do, Google it. Dr. Google is your friend. But thanks for watching. I'm going to say over and out, bye bye.